We got Russell Lamia. 10 WWE Superstar. He wrestled right past their prime. I know Ric Flair is on this list. And he tried to wrestle when he was 80 years old, bro. He took one punch. And, <sighs> time out. Time out. Another punch. Time out. Time out. I think he had like a, a stroke mid match. Good. I'm glad he's all right now. Number 10, Kurt Angle. A Kurt Angle is cited by many fans and fellow wrestlers as like that little meme. That little meme. Pro wrestlers of all time. Throughout the 2000s, Angle was incredible in the ring, but gradually over time, Angle's body began to give up. Yet Angle refused to retire. He broke his neck Angle's in the Olympics, didn't he? During his final few years in TNA, weren't at the quality fans or Angle wanted. And when Angle had one final run in WWE between 2017 to 2019, WWE copyright my last video I did on um Vinny Mac. Hopefully they don't copyright this. There's no no sound or anything. Oh. Angle had numerous matches against the likes of Chad Gable, Samoa Joe, and AJ Styles, and all of these were vastly disappointing as Angle was clearly struggling to get through the respective match. When Angle eventually retired at WrestleMania 35, fans were officially ready to see Angle get put out of his misery, and the match with Baron Corbin highlighted that Angle should have called it a day a long time ago. Whilst his last few years weren't favorable to Angle, this ultimately didn't hinder his legacy one bit as he was still beloved and celebrated by fans and his peers. And it was just a case of everyone wanting Angle to ride off into the sunset with his aura and credibility intact. Number 9, The Big Show. Well, the Big Show deserves credit in the world for delivering well, the world for Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And around 2014, the fan perception of The Big Show began to shift. Big Show's character and in-ring work regressed significantly, and this led to fans turning on him. WWE had a talented roster, yet Big Show was pushed based solely on his name and legacy, and his performances weren't justification for such a strong main event what level push. He couldn't stay there. To his credit, a few years into this shift in crowd response, he managed to get himself in insanely great shape, and some of his matches against Braun Strowman were some of the finest work of his entire career. The matches with Strowman would have been perfect to oh! send Big Show off his Oh, he broke the ring! He's too big, fat man, broke the ring! Big Show continued to wrestle, and even had matches in AEW, which peeled in comparison to his prior work. Recently, the Big Show had a match, reuniting with his tag team partner in WWE, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho. Jericho. They were a tag team? Big Show and Chris Jericho? Cruz. Whilst this has been his only match in 2024, some fans may have found this one a hard watch. Number 8, The British Bulldog. The WWE decided British Bulldog. He said British Chris Kurt Angle. was a bold move. Bulldog had suffered a career-altering injury in WCW, so 99's version of the Bulldog was a stark contrast to the Bulldog that was in WWE years prior. Bulldog was way past his prime when he resurfaced in WWE, and even though they tried their best with him, it was never going to work. But credit should be offered for them for giving a legendary name Ripple H. in the spotlight. But Jim Ross reflected on Bulldog's 99 run on his podcast, and as always, JR had a fair and unbiased take on the matter. After all these things that went on with the Hart family and the WWE, including Owen's death, and all these unfortunate deaths and injuries and drug and alcohol issues that Davey made his return, I'm not against it. I believe in second chances, gosh darn. I've had plenty of them. It was tough, but you always wonder, is he going to relapse? Is he really clean and sober? Is he healthy enough to get this thing done? There was always seemingly an abundance of unanswered questions that really needed to be answered before you kept moving forward with the talent. I think it was a business decision. I think Vince knew the pending legal issues that were going to occur as a result of Owen's accidental death was in play, quite frankly. And let's not forget that sometimes people take how good Davey was for granted. So when you get a chance to get a guy of this caliber, if he's healthy, back on your team, it's not a bad thing to try. Now this run wouldn't last long, as on 15th May 2000, he would take a hiatus from wrestling. Number 7, Ric Flair. Yeah, I know. The man was completely justified in re-signing Ric Flair in 2001. Flair was still a major name in the world of pro wrestling, and he could still somewhat deliver in the ring. Flair's WWE run lasted between 2001 to 2008, and as this run went on, Flair's in-ring output seemed to get worse Dang! and worse. Age was evidently catching up to Flair. However, it wasn't all bad, as the multi-time world champion still had some standout matches during his final few years in the company. When Flair retired at WrestleMania 24, it was a moment of celebration, as Flair retired following an outstanding matchup against Shawn Michaels, HBK. and fans collectively hoped that this was it for Flair. Unfortunately, Flair would wrestle numerous times after this matchup. A chop block on Sting? Is that Sting? on a pay-per-view card, which was marketed around his final matchup. All of these matches were difficult to watch, 
and there was concern throughout them that the legendary name was going to get seriously hurt. Flair even revealed that he had a legitimate heart attack during his last match. Number 6. Kevin Nash When Kevin Nash returned to WWE television in 2011, there was some concern that Nash was going to wrestle way past his prime. Nash had an extended run in TNA and his in-ring output during this run wasn't exactly captivating. Nash was still a shell of his former self during his 2011 WWE run and his match with Triple H at the TLC pay-per-view was a testament to this. Nash was even rumored to wrestle CM Punk at one stage and this would have been a total disaster. But Nash wouldn't stop in 2011 as he would wrestle numerous other times before officially Royal retiring Rumble? in Royal 2016. Rumble? Number 5. Kane! Kane. Kane managed to remain relevant in numerous eras of WWE. Yep. However, as Kane got into the latter stages of his career, he turned to corporate Kane. Kane in feature programs on TV began to dwindle. This lack of demand began to surface during his run as Corporate Kane, as Kane's matches were terrible and WWE had stripped away everything that made his character special. In recent years, the Devil's Favorite Demon has taken a step back from the squared circle in favor of focusing on his political career was a mayor? Move, as Kane's WWE work was noticeably impacting his legacy. Despite there being a lack of demand to see the former WWE Champion wrestle again, Kane hasn't shut the door on having one more WWE match. This is what he had to say during an interview with PW Mania. I'll always leave that door open. In WWE, we never say never. I don't know what will happen. I'll do some stuff here and there in the WWE. That's a part of me and it's something I enjoy and want to do for the rest of my life. If it's something in the ring, I don't know. Maybe you have to ask Kane that question. <laughs> Number four, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Hulk Hogan was a name that just Hulk Hogan still wrestles? A day. Hogan had numerous opportunities to retire on top, yet he Bro, he dyed his hair black. Just didn't know when to call it a day. I Hogan thought he had a blonde beard. I ain't know. I thought I ain't know his hair was black. He dyed his mustache and his hair. Numerous opportunities. Well, I guess his hair is blonde and his beard is grew. You know how some people with hair is black and they got like a uh 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 like a blonde beard? He dyed his mustache blonde. Or he dyed his beard black. One of them. to retire on top, yet he couldn't resist coming back for another run time and time. I know he grew a beard and it was black. Throughout the 2000s left a lot to be desired. As outside of some bright moments... Did the Rock just hit an RKO? Bro, the Rock hit an RKO? ...with his long-term injuries. And this limited his mobility in the ring. Hogan would even wrestle in TNA, which was an unpleasant visual to Sting! say the least. Why Hogan felt the need to wrestle in the company was never clear, but it completely exposed Hogan and it never should have happened. Hogan last wrestled back in 2012 in a live event match for TNA, and believe it or not, Hogan has never officially retired. It was rumored that Hogan was going to win the annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal a few years back, so it's clear that Hogan has no intentions of hanging up the red and yellow indefinitely. Number three, Goldberg. Goldberg, you're next. Has never been a name known for his in-ring skills, but this didn't mean that Goldberg always had poor matches, as that simply isn't the case. But when Goldberg had his second WWE run, it became more obvious that Goldberg couldn't hang with the modern roster. Goldberg had the perfect reintroduction to WWE, as his match and subsequent squash of Brock Lesnar at 2016 Survivor Series marked a supposed iconic end to the character. Unfortunately, WWE brought the former world champion back time and time again, and they even put the Universal title on him twice. This was something that there was no demand for, and Goldberg's performance didn't warrant a world title win. A Goldberg had some true stinkers during this second run, and worse of them was his... I was going to, uh, uh, when they're in a Thunderdome. A Goldberg had some the WrestleMania. stinkers during this second run. At the run. Performance Center. Of them was his infamous match with the Undertaker. This was a match in which Goldberg dropped the dead man right on his head, and it was a miracle that both men were able to walk out of the ring. Goldberg has stated publicly that. Russell Lamia. It's not about fat or any better on sports, baby! That he's open to wrestling again. And whilst nobody can stop Goldberg from competing again, maybe it's time that he enjoyed his retirement in peace and stayed out of his weird circle. Number two, Mick Foley. A 2000 was the year in Mick which Foley. Mick Foley initially retired. That man had three different personalities. It was Mick Foley, Cactus Jack, and um, Dude Love. Foley wrestled Triple H inside a Hell in That's where Charles Scott got the Cactus Jack from. Um, Mick Foley. Set to be it for the wrestling megastar. However, this initial retirement lasted a matter of weeks as Foley returned to be a key part of the build to WrestleMania 16. Following this reappearance, Foley wrestled numerous matches for the WWE that were unofficially labeled as retirement matches. <laughs> Why you jump like that? Foley wrestling names such as Carlito and Jonathan Coachman. 
probably should have without a doubt stopped Do love. asking for classic against Randy Orton or the 2006 hardcore masterpiece against Oh Ace. yeah, Mankind. He had Mick Foley, Mankind, Cactus Jack, and Do Love. Before Mankind got the little side. Yeah, that's Mankind's move. Bug and couldn't resist he put on. his finger in your when mouth. Left WWE, he even wrestled several matches for TNA. And TNA what the hell is TNA? Movie, even put their world title on him. Bear in mind, TNA had names such as Kurt Angle, AJ It's like the big three. It's like the, it's like the retirement league for the wrestlers or something? TNA? That's like the retirement. What is this? Somehow, they believe that Foley winning their world title was the correct Like the big three? Foley wrestling for years on end. Like it is for the NBA, retired Foley NBA players? really affected his legacy, as Foley is still an under- <laughs> It would have had the perfect ending if the wrestling great just knew when to call it a day. And number one, The Undertaker. Undertaker. WrestleMania 33 was a perfect night for The Undertaker to retire. The dead man had done everything in the industry and now it was time for him to bow out in style. Ultimately, the match with Roman Reigns was so disappointing that he decided to have several more matches. Some of these were decent, yet unfortunately, some of them represented the worst work of his entire career as he just couldn't deliver like he used to. The matches with Goldberg and the tag match against DX were matches the dead man no doubt wish used to. Bruh, I knew he tried to, he tried to slam him. Tag match against DX were matches He's just gonna hold him up. <laughs> dang, no Goldberg, dang. Forget. The Undertaker kept going until he had a match that was good enough to retire on, and this wasn't until 2020. In the aforementioned year, the dead man wrestled AJ Styles in an acclaimed Boneyard match, and The Undertaker, as well as the fans, believed that this was the right time and the exact moment for The Undertaker to bring his career to a close. But there you have it folks, 10 WWE wrestlers that wrestled Shot to wrestle on it.